talking about like mental health with your niggas is like weird or scary sometimes, especially in like black culture. So this whole song is just me telling you exactly how I feel at this very moment. I'm saying Dr. Weber because it's whoever is listening to the song and that's who the, my doctor is and my therapist. This is This whole song is a therapy session, really. The skit for this song in the beginning, Sat On Your Motherfucking Birthday, is by Ricky Thompson. Um, Ricky Thompson is like one of my favorite upcoming comedians and I had him narrate most of the the whole EP, LP, mixtape album. Um, and he killed it. When you hear the skit in the beginning, you think like, oh my God, this is about to be such a banger. Like, oh, this is about to be turned. And it just kind of flows in. I sit here and tell you my problems. That's how this work, right? I'm supposed to be open and honest. Like I got time, right? My niggas doing sessions and I'm doing sessions. Can't manifest masculinity, your only weapon. The idea of a man in, in this day and age is, is kind of many different things. It isn't just uh, your average uh, muscular, degrading woman kind of guy. Man, I've thought about suicide a hundred times, but I hate the disappointment to see my mama cry. Birthdays these days be the worst days. Cause I know I'm getting older and not happier. You see it in movies, that friend who throws like that super surprise birthday party for their homie. And you're like, damn, like I wish one of my friends would do that for me. Like I've never had a surprise birthday thrown for me, but it's like, whatever, I'm not asking for it. <laughs> but you know, April 18th, just for anybody, April 18th, write that down, Aries. Me and my father love each other, but we barely show it. He hates that I left home and the lawn is now his to mow it. With every sad line or, or honest line that I say, like I try to add a bit of humor to it so you you ain't out here crying, you know what I mean? When I say that my dad is mowing the lawn now, it's just more so, yeah, my dad really be on FaceTime talking about the lawn, miss you, you know? And he be telling me I gotta come home and mow the lawn. He look at my generation and think that fashion's over. I kill my sister if she ever model fashion over. That's a joke. Like, if my sister wants to model fashion over, like, she can go ahead. I'm not gonna, like, bash a woman because she models fashion. That's so wrong. I'm always on a flight or I'm in a hurry. I miss when losing my virginity was my only worry. Back when putting on a condom had me really scary. And milkshakes were the only time we'd eat a cherry. There's this perception as a man when you're in high school growing up that eating pussy is like nasty or some shit like that. I don't know how it is in high school now. Y'all might have changed up. But going up for us, like that was like a, like, we was like, hell no, I would never eat pussy. <laughs> and then. Growing up, like, you love that shit. So it's just me being honest. I'm not trying to be explicit, guys. I think learning how to eat pussy from someone who eat pussy is better than learning from someone who doesn't. And that's word to my ex, and that's word to my tongue, and that's word to the woman who had my heart beating drums, drums, drums. I know most most men wouldn't really like to, like, admit they learned how to eat pussy from a certain ex of theirs or their girl, but like, it's just the truth. Like, I became better at that because of her. <laughs> Love is what I cherish to Miss Parrish. Flew all the way to Paris and we made out on my terrace. I kept it on the low low cause I was in love and the shade I had in my room was already enough. Yeah, me and Kay dated for a, a good amount of time and that's just something that happened between us that we both agreed to keep private. Anyone who knows me personally knows I'm not really I'm not really comfortable in the public eye. I'm a real like quiet guy. I keep to myself sometimes. Um, and I'm only out here when I'm doing music, really. Um, and, and Kay like really understood that about me and, and uh, still like one of the best homies I have. And she's still top notch artist to me. Nothing's changed. I'm going on some dates and I'm making some plans, but it's hard to find some love if the girl is a fan. And after we fuck, she want a picture with me. She got me feeling like Paperboy, but I cry when she leaves. I mentioned Paperboy because he goes through so much shit that is so relatable to me in Atlanta, especially as an artist. Just a lot of bullshit you gotta deal with, especially in your hometown. You know, like people you grew up with, all these random people coming out the woodwork saying stuff about you and all this stuff. These intros ain't meant to be bangers. They meant for you and me, so we'll never end up as strangers. Will Ferrell's ass can't even handle this weather. Tune in your speakers and please be my doctor, whoever. Most of this album is a lot of uh, mixtape, EPLP, whatever you want to call it, is a lot of bangers. And I really just wanted to let people know, like, this intro isn't a banger. This is just for you and me to get to know each other a bit more. You basically being my therapist and, and kind of, like, helping me deal with these issues because I don't know how to, like, kind of, like, I've just never seen a therapist. I just don't know how to go about that, really. 
Boy, you looking big mad when you see a young brother up in first class. And you damn right my ego like LaVar Ball. They hate to see a black man who can't get black ball. Mm, skrr. My paper long. My paper long. You damn right, bitch. My paper long. It's that yellow mellow fellow. Yeah, that yellow stone. Pay the cello for the fellow's fake of silicone. I went from plaque in my teeth to having plaques on the wall. Gold album with platinum records. Who would have thought? Young nigga, light jigger, trying to make me a boss. I take my mama to Louie and take your girl to the Ross, nigga. Jay-Z's important to the culture, period. Everybody knows that name. He been really running this for a long time. And 444 reminded me that. Back in the motherfucking building. Your boot thing want my children. My net worth gonna be billions. Shot to get me here like ceiling. Did this be a chameleon. Air like a motherfucking rolling. My whip, my bitch, not stolen. Anyone who has a preconceived notion about a rapper or a black male, I just wanna let you know my whip is bought, not stolen. Everything I have is owned. My, I make my money legally. Hey doc, do I tell them how I actually feel? Or do I see a therapist and them the pain with the pills? I would love to not feel pain, that would be great. But the drugs for me were, I didn't really like. I seen a lot of my friends do it and it really influenced me not to do it. Seeing close people that I care about go through that taught me like that's not what I should do. And me contemplating that in the verse is more so just me being honest. Like, yeah, I've thought about that, but I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. This way niggas play tough, won't even smile in mirrors, and we learn to fuck hoes off trial and error. Friday nights, where them broke niggas ball out, and then B-Nay be the name that your girlfriend gonna call out. So all my niggas with some melanin, let your feelings settle in. If you feeling worthless, you should probably go and tell a friend. Tell it. I said that line because I just wanted a young, tough, dude who's listening to me to understand like dog like you might see my lifestyle and think I'm amazing but it isn't all glitz and glamour so it'd be it'd be nice if you were just honest with yourself yeah but I should take that advice this year's been crazy what the fuck is my life my best friend got married you could bet that I cried seeing a kid you grew up with go from like a, a young kid to a grown man is just a moment you know it's just like a little a uh, rom-com movie. I cried when I seen him dancing with his mom and they were both crying together and I was just like, man, I, ca I can't hold this in. <laughs> I met Spike and Brad Pitt, no malls, I'm Saks Fifth, nickel. The song closes with Ricky Thompson just basically being like, get your shit together and turn the fuck up. Mainly just because that's what people are constantly telling me. Why are you sad? Like, you, sh you should be turning up. You should be having this many hoes, this many bitches, blah, blah, And I'm usually just like sitting there like, okay, um, yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll be at home watching that. <laughs>